my conversation with you is uh, leadership challenges in 2009. And uh, the real topic is about thinking differently. We are a search firm that only works for nonprofits, including many of you. And uh, we learn from our clients. We learn from our heroes. Uh, thinking differently can pay off. The biggest concern that nonprofits have today revolves around funding. The funding water table is sinking for everyone across the nonprofit sector, and it's just as true for the arts, health and human services, education organizations as it is for land trusts. Intense competition for funding is increasing as the size of the funding pool is sinking. A conventional response to this is to drill deeper and to reach that shrinking funding pool, and we're certainly not suggesting that you neglect that tactic. In fact, there is increased emphasis on raising money, and as you can imagine, we're helping a broad array of nonprofits uh, find chief executives and development leaders who are very good at raising money. We do suggest, however, that drilling deeper is, is only a part of the solution to a sinking water table, or in this case, a shrinking funding pool. It's part of the solution, it's an important part of the solution, but it is not the solution. Another conventional response is to economize and conserve and downsize and do without. Again, it's an appropriate tactic to a point. We can also economize ourselves right out of effectiveness and right out of existence. Unconventional responses require more thought, but there are solutions to be found. By definition, thinking unconventionally is, is hard because as soon as you systematize it, it becomes conventional. <laughs> but try. It's very rewarding. Routinely reviewing ideas that have been previously considered out of bounds is not a bad practice to consider. Thinking in terms of outcomes instead of processes also helps, as does a passionate dedication to simplicity and clarity. Unconventional thinking rarely results in some grand, brilliant strategy. When successful, it generally starts as a tiny and expedient survival tactic. Only in retrospect do the most successful approaches survive, gain traction, and appear brilliant. Think about the brilliant, now brilliant, people, unconventional thinkers, who have the reputation for unconventional thinking. Think about corporations that you might know, or nonprofit leaders that you might know, and think about their genesis. And think about how tiny those unconventional thoughts were initially and how important they are today. And that could be us. Some techniques we've seen work have risen to the stature of cliche. I'm just going to uh, mention them because they, they do deserve some consideration. Think about adversaries as friends. If adversaries were friends, what could be accomplished? Think about competitors as collaborators. Again, the same principle applies. Partner where possible. It builds goodwill, provides excellent intelligence on current thinking, drives new ideas, generates new opportunities and networks. Partnering is important. Plan for the worst, hope for the best, and act before being forced to act. Radically simplify, radically simplify. Eliminate, simplify, make routine, and then do it over and over again, destroying in the process things that worked previously but don't work now. Think about your core and then question it. If you were about just one project, what would it be? And then if you couldn't do that project, what would you be about then? There are questions that you can ask yourself that force renewal. And in this time, renewal is going to be a survival tactic. Think about outsourcing. Think about job sharing. Think about temporary and seasonal and 1099 workforce arrangements. Think about a four-day schedule. Think about sabbaticals. Think about retention. These aren't original ideas. You've heard them before. But by going through them again and by looking at your operations again, you'll come out with new answers and you'll surprise yourself. The answers are within your organizations and within your heads. And we will take the lessons that you provide to us and we'll relate them to others. And that will help them as well. Renegotiate agreements where circumstances that form the basis for those agreements have changed. This includes rents, contracts, grants, You'll be in the same boat as the people who you're renegotiating with, and sometimes the shoe will be on the other foot. It will be tough, but it doesn't have to be adversarial. We're all in the same boat here. 
we need to figure out how to move forward and renegotiation even long-held agreements, even restricted grants, even leases that you've just signed, renegotiation is in order. Think about asking your people to do what they have never done before. Dare them to succeed or fail after trying their best. Allow them to succeed. Take some risks. Think about technology. Do you need less or do you need more? Think about what your funders value and if they will not fund what you wish, your programs, your overhead, your organization, then question the effectiveness of your advocacy and question the value of your programs and your need for overhead. If you're focused on major gift fundraising but can't get funding that way, then think about other types of funding. These aren't things that you don't know. Of course you do. We just, in a, in a different time, had been thinking more about our programs as we were able to fund ourselves and we're able to move forward, now we have to go back and get back to first principles. Think about how you were when you founded your organizations. Think about how you were when you were small. Think about how you were earlier in your career where you had to do things that were entirely new to yourself. In that thinking uh, will be your answers. We believe that you and the organizations you lead are very important. You do very important work. You are our heroes and we honor you for the work that you have done and the contribution you have made to the lives of all of us and the lives of our children. You have strong support from the community and you have shown an ability to advocate and capture the hearts of young and old alike. There's still more work to do in building constituencies for land observation and these times afford those opportunities to be creative and for determined leaders in this field to lead.